Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So, today we're going to get started on the clacker, or the clacker portion of our dinner triangle. And bad of me, I left it over there across the shop. I'm not going to go get that just yet. You'll get to see it at the end of this video. Uh, so basically, we made our dinner triangle in another video, in our first video in this series. You can go click on the link right here, and that'll take you back to that series. Today we're going to be focusing on the clacker. Sadly, we ran out of time in the other video. So, the measurements are as follows. We are using 16 millimeter diameter rod or 5 8 inch round by 250 millimeter long or 10 inches long of 5 8 inch round stock, if you will. This is all mild steel. This is not high carbon steel. It, it's all mild steel and it's a fairly good size mild steel so this way we get a really nice tone, a really nice bell tone out of it. Not too tinny, not too bassy. And so it's going to create a really nice bell for us. Also, I'll go ahead and give this a, a quick mention. I am doing this video series. I'm doing this project and more to complement the Blacksmith's Cheat Sheet. The Blacksmith's Cheat Sheet is an ebook that my wife created. Once again, I'll put a little link right here to this card here that you all can take and go to. And it is there to try to help you sell your ironwork. So all the SEO, all the search engine tags, keywords, things like that has already been worked out for each one of these projects. I'm going to be helping you while demonstrating these projects for you. And if you follow along with the cheat sheet, then you can take and use this in your own business and hopefully it will be of a great help to you. So without further ado, let's get smithing. So the first step in this process is going to hang over about the same distance or a cube of material of this 5 8 inch rod off the far side of the anvil and we're going to use half on half off blows. So. Okay, so you should end up with something like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to continue to taper this out after a minute, but while it's thick, we are going to work on turning this into the ball itself on the end of the clacker. To turn this into a ball, you're going to want this to be very, very hot. So bring it up to a near welding heat or right up to a light welding heat. Then we're going to use back face blows and at our same, keeping our same angles and geometry, we're going to slowly be roughing this off into more of a column shape and take off our corners and just keep in mind you're trying to just not hit the same place all at once. You may be asking yourself, well Roy, this isn't looking much like a ball. And the reason for that being is we will eventually put this back to center. But right now we just want to round it all up. Once you put it to center, it will be a lot more difficult to actually get this to shape out like a ball on the end. So there you go. So mainly you just look at a facet or a corner or a peak that you see and hammer that off with back face hammer blows. Just like so. Now that we've got that ball formed, now we're going to take and go ahead and start straightening out that ball the opposite way. And that's going to straighten this right on up. And that's what we're looking for. The big kick here, the big kicker here, is you want to make sure that you stay off and you don't hit this ball after you straighten it out. 
Um, that'll get it back pushed in line, but you really want to make sure that you don't hit that. So keep off of it at all costs. So the next portion here is we're actually going to forge down this back to round. We're going to forge this back to round. That's what we'll do next with this little ball for the collector. Okay, now that we've got this slot, now that we've gotten the ball in taken care of, we're going to come over to the anvil and we are going to go ahead and put a little flat on it. What this flat is going to enable us to do is be able to punch through this piece or slot punch this piece. That's what we'll work on now. We want to come in and leave about the same material thickness on all sides all around this piece and go ahead and slot punch it. So, be careful with it. It's always a good idea. You can end up hit, hurting your hand if you're not careful. So just take your time, don't get in a rush. Haste makes waste. And the worst kind of waste is when it's your hand or extremities. So we got a little mark going and we're gonna keep punching that right on through. So I've got this piece mostly punched through. I saved you all the boring tidbits here. It's just taking multiple heats and getting it all the way to where I drive it down to the surface of the anvil, flip it over, and you knock out your slug. Pretty much the standard slit and drift thing here. Now you can just punch this hole, whatever really floats your boat. You don't have to do this portion of it here. This is just something I'm doing for my own personal aesthetic. Again, sky's the limit when it comes to this. It really lends itself to a lot of your own personal desires and stuff. So now that we've got that hole punched through, now we're going to use a drift. This is a small 3 8 inch, well, it goes up to half inch in diameter or 12.5 millimeter drift. And we're going to drive that all the way through this piece and widen this out and then we'll go ahead and hit off the top. Okay, now that we've got this good and hot, you want to take a really high heat on this and now we're going to go ahead and drift it. Just keep driving this right on down through. And drive it all the way through the piece. And we're going to go ahead and grab up this drift again. I can get it out from between my anvil here. And we're going to flip it over and do it from the opposite side, whichever side doesn't have the suck down. And we're going to drive it down through again. Just like so. And there you go. You've got this end of the clacker. Now we'll go ahead and heat it up and I'll take it around a little bit of a cone mandrel if it's large enough, if you've drifted it round enough, 
you can go over the horn of your anvil if you have a sharp enough horn. If not, you'll have to use a bickern like this. And that's what we'll use over at the hardy hole. All right, got a good hot heat again. And we're gonna focus on knocking off our corners. And just rounding that back in. Again, this is just a personal aesthetic. You can do whichever, whatever you like. I'll end up running the drip through this one more time as well after I get it cleaned up the way I like it. And then that's how you make the clacker. So I'll go ahead and show you here at the end of this video how that all comes together. Again, I hope that you'll take advantage of the blacksmith cheat sheet and uh, allow that to help you grow your business. It's just a really good read. It maybe has some projects in there that you haven't even thought of yet. And Jessica, again, Jessica did a really good job and worked her a little hard out on that. And uh, I think it'll be really handy to you. But there you go. I'll have a little more clean up work on that. And Stick around for the bonus clip and let's ring a bell.